Hey YouTube, my name is Dustin Apple and this is The Outdoor Mentors. Join me on the road to 300. In 2022, I will have shot a bow for 30 years and it's time to challenge myself and see what I can do with stick and string. This is The Road to 300. When it comes to arrow rests, I've kind of shot them all. Um, from fallaways, like this to what I like to call a fall a stay <laughs> okay it'll stay up there for a hunting rest and it's awesome um, but an ultra HDX or any of the ultra lineup let's uh, let's look at this real quick so it is down let's see how far my hand moves okay that's probably about an inch um, that inch of travel means that, come on, fall down. You don't get a hell of a lot of adjustment when it comes up. There's a little line on here, and when you're at full draw, the rotating piece has to, the, has to line up to make sure when you shoot, it falls down. So if this takes an inch of movement to activate properly, that means that you're not going to be able to time it to where it gets out of the way quickly. It'll make sense here in a second, stick with me. This being a limb driven rest, this is a Hamski Trinity uh, or a Target Pro, um, whatever. It has the micro uh, windage and elevation adjustments. It is a lizard tongue uh, launcher but as you can see while the uh, activation cord is limp the rest is up but when you pull it it goes down now let's look at that again okay so it's up right there here's where the cord is attached to let's see how far i move it that's like a quarter of an inch okay let's see if we're in focus or not but that quarter of an inch means that i can time this rest ultimately three or four times more than what I can time this one. Why is timing important when it comes to a rest? Well, let's say I'm really good at holding my pin on the target, but when it comes to pulling the trigger, I vary a little bit in my back pressure. And maybe I'm not the perfect you know form when it comes to follow through the longer an arrow wrist touches an arrow then the longer that arrow wrist has an ability to transfer a negative effect to that arrow long story short I want my arrow wrist to get down quickly during the shot like as quick as possible that way it's not touching it all the way through the shot because if I follow through poorly I don't want that to transfer back into my arrow I want my arrow rest to not touch it during the shot that way hopefully it will continue to go to the point to where I was aiming at that's kind of the whole draw between a limb driven rest versus a cable driven rest it may seem like a lot but when you're trying to get your groups to go from this down to this it's a step I'm willing to take price wise this is like a $230 rest and I just shake my head when I watch all of these prices continue to go up on archery equipment once again, I scratched the bottom of the barrel and I found this one used on eBay. You can see what kind of condition it's in, okay? And I give $140 for it. So I was very happy with that. Um, and I'm going to give this Hamski Trinity a try. So we got our Hamski already mounted on the bow here. And we, uh, we did something a little bit different with our drive line. Um, we'll flip the bow over and we'll look at that here in just a second. I did put a little rubber piece down here um, just to hold the arrow 
in place while I'm drawing. Um, once again, with a limb driven wrist, the arrow wrist is down um, while it is at rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the bow over real quick. Since our, our bow riser actually has uh, two burger holes, um, I chose to go ahead and put two um, Allen bolts in there that will absolutely lock this in place. Now there are set screws that a guy can use um, in the base of the rest itself, but honestly, I didn't want to scratch this pretty red anodizing. You can see that the activation cord is tied to our spring, which allows the rest to have spring tension on it while it is down. Now, if we run focus out to here, you can see that there is a dog bone, or what I'm referring to as a dog bone, that will allow you to pick up the slack. Um, if you can see that right there, let's zoom in a little bit bumper focus just a little to right there and you can see that I put some uh, serving just a little bit of uh, BCY uh, 3D uh, around there to tie the dog bone to the actual activation cord that way it does not slip. The, uh, the having it straight is what keeps it from slipping but once you once you go to draw back um, this cord obviously becomes limp. So let's uh, change our camera angle just a little bit to go all the way out here on the end. Okay, right there. You can see that I've actually tied the activation cord into this uh, yoke that, uh, that spreads our cables. Okay, so from this angle, you can see exactly where we've tied our activation cord into the yoke system of the bow. Um, we zoom back out a little bit, and we can uh, we can talk about it a little bit. So this is obviously going to be a consistent place to tie, and uh, you know that hole just kind of begged me to put that cable there, um, and I did tightened it tight. Okay, um, it's definitely going to be something that's repetitive um, and a solid choice. This is solid, but it is not allowing me to time the rest. So hopefully this will work. Um, we've shot the bow 100 times or so, so far, and you know, this isn't an issue. I'll, I'll, so far, I like what it's doing, but it does come up a little early. The rest itself comes up a little early. And if it comes up early, that means it's dropping late. So I would like to have it drop a little sooner and we might actually move this down the road. But for right now, we're gonna roll with this until we get our stabilizers completely set up and everything in place to where I can actually hold on target. Well guys, I hope that uh, explanation was easy for you to follow. Um, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to talk about stabilizers and we're going to talk about all the things that, you know, bring this bow together um, one day at a time. So it's a journey. It's a, uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we're going to break down every single thing that we have put into this bow um, and explain to you why I did it. So... Tell me in the comments if there's something that you would do different. Go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow.